Hello everyone, it is Phil the Harness Doctor and in today's video we're going to be talking about wire splicing. Now this video is actually brought to you by all of you folks, the viewers. I get asked pretty frequently on how I do my wire splices and today I wanted to show you the different ways that you can perform wire splices and show you how I do the wire splices on all of the products that are sold and shipped from HarnessDoctor.com. Some of the tools we're going to be using in this video will be a heat gun, a side cutter, a pick tool, small flathead screwdriver, electrician scissors, a wire cutter and wire stripper that has the ability to cut and strip in the wire gauges that you're going to be working with, a sharp razor knife, soldering iron, some solder, different types of electrical tape, and some heat treat tubing. Here I've got some wire that we're going to be splicing into this wire harness here. And I've actually taken this out to, to show you better clarity on that. And then up here I've got different types of splice taps that are widely available on Amazon. I personally do not like using those. So I'm gonna show you what I do here with regards to wire splicing. Now I will leave links for everything you see here down in the description below. So go ahead and check those out at your convenience. With that said, let's get started. So let's talk about this first splice. This is called a butt splice. And the intended use for this is you are actually taking the wire that you want to splice into and you're actually cutting this wire. So the intended purpose of this butt splice is you're gonna cut this wire and then you're going to strip some of the insulation off on both ends of this wire. Just like so and then you're going to take your wire that you want to splice into and strip some insulation off that and you are going to tie these two wires together like so we'll trim off some of the excess and then you're going to insert this into your butt splice on one end and then you'll take the other end of this and insert it into the other, into the other end just like that. And then you'll take a crimp tool and you'll crimp these two together. Here is a crimp tool that I forgot to add in the original list by Klein. And this has the insulated and non-insulated crimping options. So we're gonna go ahead and crimp this using the insulated option on one side. Just like that and then we will crimp it here on the other side. Just like that. So that is a butt splice. You can then take some electrical tape and wrap this up to clean it up, put that back into your wire harness and rewrap the entire thing. So that's a butt splice. The next type of splice is a, I think these are called vampire clips. And on this, you'll see there are two holes here. One has a channel that goes all the way through and the inner channel has a cap. So the intention behind this, let me cut some of this wire here. So we're gonna go ahead and splice this green on this harness. The intention on this is you wanna open this up a little bit and you're gonna insert this on the channel that runs completely through the connector. just like that. Then you'll take your wire and you're gonna insert it on the open end all the way in until it stops. And again, this is capped off on this side. And then once you have both wires inserted into the connector, you can then take some pliers and clamp down on the metal clamp. And then you simply close the clamp just like that. So this is a, a T-splice using one of these vampire style clips. Now, one of the reasons why I don't like this is because sometimes this metal clamp doesn't actually clamp all the way down, making contact with the wire. And if you actually open this up, you can see what's happening there with this clamp. So the teeth on this metal clamp are piercing the outer jacket of this wire, making them 
make contact to each other. The next type is going to be a clamp style splice tap, but then you also have a quick disconnect on the wire that's going to be spliced in. So for example, say we wanted to splice this wire. You would take your quick disconnect and attach it to your wire, just like that. So we would strip off some of the insulation and then insert it into the quick disconnect and then we would crimp that down just like that. Then we would take your C-clamp and clamp it over the wire that you want to use just like so. And when you clamp this down, this is also doing the same thing as the other clamp where the metal clamp is piercing the wire, making contact, and then you simply take your quick disconnect with the mail on it and insert it in. Sometimes these spades can move on you, so you kind of have to fix it so it's centered and then you simply insert it just like that. So that gives you the ability to disconnect whenever you need to, if you ever need to. Now that you've seen the three different splice tap methods here, I'm gonna show you how I do it. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that if you decide to use one of these splice tap methods, it doesn't make it very pleasing to the eye if you have to wrap this with electrical tape because of the bulkiness that these connectors provide in addition to not having a great connection on these splice steps. So the method I'm gonna be showing you here is the same exact method that I use for all of my harness builds. And this method is called a lineman's splice. This is a method that I found to be the most effective in making a very positive contact. And then once we make the splice, we're gonna solder it here with our soldering iron. So the way that I do this is I ensure that I have enough working space on the wire. You don't wanna be doing this too close to the connector itself. You wanna have room. So I tend to come down a few inches away from the connector. And so using my wire cutter and wire stripper, I know that this wire is a 20 gauge wire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna locate the 20 gauge slot on my wire stripper and I'm going to make a cut on the wire but this is not going to cut the wire all the way through it's essentially making a score on the wire and my score will be about a quarter maybe half an inch just like that so then I'll take my razor knife and I will carefully remove the outer insulation. And if we did this right, we should be able to strip away the outer insulation, just like that. We want to expose the copper strands. We then want to take a flathead screwdriver or a pick tool and you want to come in here and separate the strands creating an eyelet. Just like that. We'll then strip some of the insulation off the wire you're wanting to splice in. And what I like to do is insert it like you're threading a needle just like that. And then we're gonna wrap this wire at least three times, just like so. Then we'll take some solder and our soldering iron. And 
and we'll solder this here. Just like that. Now, if you don't have access to a soldering iron or solder, you can simply perform the splice and use electrical tape to wrap it. And that'll be just as effective. I like taking it a step further and soldering. If I have the opportunity to use heat shrink tubing, I will do that. And on this particular connector, I do have the ability to remove this terminal from the connector. So I'm gonna go and do that now. This connector has a terminal position assurance or TPA, and this essentially locks your terminals in the connector. And then in the front of the connector, there's, second, there's a secondary lock inside each cavity. So if I want to be able to remove this green wire here, I just apply some backward pressure and inside this face or the slot, there's a lever on the inside and with your pick tool, you can lift that lever up while applying backward pressure to pull the wire out. And the reason why I like to do this and take it a step further is I can then slide over the heat shrink tube and we'll heat shrink this. Just like so. Now the heat shrink tubing that I use is a water tight or water resistant heat shrink tubing. When you actually apply heat to it, it releases a liquid on the inside that creates a nice seal. So that's the way that I do it. And then reinsert it back into the cavity that it came out of and lock the TPA down. And again, if you don't have access to a soldering iron, solder, or even a heat gun, you can perform the same steps that I did here. You can use a lighter to heat this. Just be careful you don't burn the wire. You just wanna have constantly moving heat and that'll achieve the same result. Uh, if you don't have the ability to add a heat shrink tube to it, you can use electrical tape once you've spliced the wire in. Next, we'll take some high heat automotive harness tape and we're gonna go ahead and wrap the harness back. And then we cut the excess. And there you have it. Well folks, that concludes our video on wire splicing. I hope you enjoyed this video and hope this video helps you in all of your splicing endeavors. And again, all the tools I've used in this video, I'll leave links in the description below. If you haven't done so already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Hit that bell notification icon so you can stay up to date on future video releases by me. And again, this is Phil, the Harness Doctor. We'll see you in the next one.